wedding insurance, permits, and licensing. That's coming up next on the Wedding Planning Podcast. Thousands of engaged couples have planned simple, meaningful, and affordable multi-day, multi-event wedding celebrations, and you can do it too with Wedding Weekend by Design. Wedding Weekend by Design is a digital wedding planning package specifically for couples who want to maximize their wedding celebration across multiple days and multiple events. Whether you're stuck in the initial thoughts of, I don't think we can pull that off with our time and budget phase, or you've already committed, but you're finding yourselves in a tangled mess of half-made plans, finally, I have an incredibly straightforward six-step framework to planning your multi-day wedding celebration from start to finish with absolutely zero guesswork. Visit WeddingWeekend.co to get started planning your dream celebration today. That website again is WeddingWeekend.co. Enjoy the show. Thank you so much as always for joining me here today. We have an amazingly informative and jam-packed show. Today we're going to demystify the world of wedding insurance, permits, and licensing. Now, you've likely had nightmares about all the things that can go wrong on your wedding day. And if those haven't kicked in for you yet, just wait until it gets closer. I'd be willing to bet that you're going to wake up in a sweat at least a few times over all the things that could possibly go wrong. So a news flash for you something will most likely go unaccording to the plan and that is normal and it's unfortunately just unavoidable. We can't buffer you against all mishaps like a lipstick spot on your dress, swollen and hurting feet, or running out of something at the bar. But the good news is you can protect yourself and your wedding from big disasters with a simple little thing called wedding insurance. Wedding insurance is really reasonably priced and for just a couple to a few hundred dollars, it can provide you with priceless peace of mind. When I put together this show, it brings to mind those things in life that feel really, really intimidating and unknown, and it seems like it's just something that's really complicated, so you put it off, you don't want to deal with it. For lots of couples, wedding insurance and permits falls into this category. We're going to get into all the details, but I do want to share from the very beginning that wedding insurance costs just a couple hundred dollars. It's really easy to find out if you need an event permit, and permits can be secured online with just a couple of clicks. So I know this stuff sounds intimidating and overwhelming, and it's probably not something you want to deal with, but we're going to demystify the process in today's show. Just a little bit of time spent researching and maybe a small investment of a couple hundred bucks to know that you are totally protected. There's nothing scary about that. Before we dive in, let me outline the structure of today's show. We're going to cover wedding insurance in detail, and following that, we're going to have a brief conversation about event permits and licensing that you might need to consider for your wedding day. And then in the second half of today's show, I have your wonderful questions and stories to share. So let's do it. Starting with wedding insurance, and I have a big fat disclaimer for you. I am not an insurance professional. Today's show does not constitute legal advice. You will absolutely want to do extensive research into your venue, your vendors, and all the requirements that may apply to your wedding and your situation. You will also want to have a thorough conversation with a qualified insurance agent to determine what type of policy and coverage is appropriate for you and your wedding. Let's start with an overview of what is wedding insurance. 
In short, wedding insurance is just like any other type of insurance you have for your home, your car, travel. You're investing a lot of money in your wedding day and wedding insurance protects that investment against unforeseen circumstances and reimburses covered expenses incurred from a loss due to an adverse situation. This can apply to everything from your wedding gifts, your photos, your dress, rings, your venue itself, any property damage. Every policy is different and what is covered will be different from policy to policy. But in very plain English, if your venue burns to the ground, if your dress is destroyed in a basement flood, if your gifts are stolen, or an injury or health condition prevents your attendance, Wedding insurance may cover the financial loss of rescheduling or replacement. So that's what it is. Do you need it? Do you need wedding insurance or should you have wedding insurance? It depends and you'll see vastly different opinions out there on the topic. I'm simply here today to share the information and the facts with you. I'm not here to tell you definitively whether or not you need wedding insurance or you should have wedding insurance. I understand that's maybe not the answer you wanted to hear, but this is one of those areas where I sadly cannot give you a straightforward black or white yes or no. The cost for a basic wedding insurance policy can be just a couple hundred dollars, which might totally be worth it. To be clear, we're not talking about a multi-thousand dollar expense. You know when you book an airline flight and you'll see a little box all the way at the bottom right before you click confirm and pay and you check it if you want to protect your trip? They call it trip insurance or travel insurance, and it's typically not a lot of money, 15 bucks, maybe $25. Well, apply that to your wedding. You're investing $25,000, let's say, in your wedding. Would it be worth $200 to know that you'd be protected against a major catastrophe that could potentially ruin the $25,000 worth of plans? I'll let you sit with that and think about it. My advice, again, I can't definitively say if wedding insurance is appropriate for you and your situation, but I can say that I think it's absolutely worth a little bit of research and time spent speaking with an insurance agent to discuss your options and get the information. And on that, let's talk about where to start. How can you start researching your options, whether or not you need to have this if you want to have it. I would start your wedding insurance exploration with your existing insurance company for your home, renters, and or auto insurance. I'd give them a call and ask an agent if they provide wedding or event insurance. If you can work with a company that you already have an existing relationship with, that makes that's even better. It makes your job easier and there will be less information to kind of go back and forth on. They already know who you are. They already have all of your information. Now, if a company that you currently work with for insurance needs does not provide wedding insurance, I would ask if they can refer you to a company that does. And if that's a no-go and you get stuck there, then I will share an article from Consumer Reports that offers some referral companies who do provide wedding insurance. I'm going to put a link to that article in the blog post for today's show that you can find at weddingplanningpodcast.co slash wedding dash insurance. Weddingplanningpodcast.co slash wedding dash insurance. I'll say here that you should never commit or pay for wedding insurance before speaking with a qualified insurance agent and fully understanding the coverage, exclusions, and the total cost to you. I'll also say here that wedding insurance that covers your gown, your venue, your vendors, That's a slightly different thing than a supplemental liability policy that will cover property damage, personal injury, 
personal liability, medical expenses, etc. Again, I am not a registered insurance agent, nor am I an expert in this area. I'm just giving you some of the information so that you can take that to a qualified professional and have a detailed conversation with them about your needs. If you're hosting your wedding at a non-traditional venue, so for example, a private home, a friend's barn, this is very important. You will need to have a blanket liability policy that covers against property damage, personal injury, and all those other things I just listed. This is not an all-inclusive list. You must have a conversation with a qualified insurance agent to determine what's appropriate for your situation. Explain exactly where you're hosting the wedding, exactly what the circumstances are, and have that agent walk you through everything from a professional point of view. Now, if you're hosting your wedding at a more traditional venue, have a conversation with the events manager about any insurance or liability requirements that you are responsible for. I'll say here that most venue properties that are dedicated to weddings and events Most properties will have their own property and liability insurance coverage, or they certainly should if they're in business and they're legit, and they will give you information on any additional requirements or additional things that you will need to supply, but you simply need to call and ask and get that information so that you have it and you're ready and we can go from there. So to recap this entire section talk with a qualified insurance agent. They'll be able to answer all of your questions and tell you exactly what you need based on your situation. I would start with your home, renters, and or auto insurance company. Ask them for referrals. And if you still have no leads, visit the blog post at weddingplanningpodcast.co slash wedding dash insurance. I'll link to an article on Consumer Reports that gives you some other options for companies that provide this. And the very last thing to note before we move on, many credit card companies do offer insurance on purchases. This is a great way to protect yourself, know what your credit card company offers. So if you're paying for vendors, your dress, travel, or any other wedding services with a credit card, you might already have some insurance coverage just from that card. I know American Express has a very generous policy on this. Check with your card company. I don't want to complicate things, but just consider what coverage you might already have as you're deciding if a separate wedding insurance policy is right for you. Also in the blog post for today's show, I'm going to put the top wedding insurance claims. So the most popular things that couples make a claim for, you'll want to be sure to go and check that out. I'm also going to include some details on what wedding insurance does not cover. So again, that's in the blog post, weddingplanningpodcast.co slash wedding dash insurance. Let's move on to permits. When you might need a permit. So for example, if you're planning on hosting your ceremony and or reception in pretty much any public space, a park, beach, lake, any city owned property, you'll want to call the city or the jurisdiction and ask about your options for getting a permit. You can also do an internet search to get started. Lots of counties, cities, states will have this information online. So I would recommend Googling your city name and then park use permit. So for example, you wanna get married on the beach in San Diego, I would Google San Diego park use permit or Chicago park use permit just for example, to get you started. If you live in a very small town, you might want to replace the city name with the state name just to get the information. It might be done on a statewide basis where you are. Permits are typically pretty cheap. 
We're talking as low as $10 to $15 and less than $50. And basically, these just give you permission to be occupying the space with your guests. For example, where I live, you need a park use permit to gather more than 25 people. So if I want to go have a birthday party for my son and invite 26 people and put up a pop-up tent for shade and bring a jumpy house, I need a permit. The last thing, the last thing, ugh, it would be awful you want to have happen during your beachfront wedding ceremony is for a ranger to pull up and break it up because you don't have the proper permits. This is cheap. This is easy. It's a simple thing on your to-do list. It's a must that you are sure you have secured the right permits for your space. And now let's move into licensing. This most often comes up in terms of music and alcohol service. Management of your venue is responsible for ensuring that the organization is properly licensed for music performed at that venue, even if the band or DJ is an independent contractor. If you are not hosting your wedding at a dedicated venue, if you're doing more of a DIY space like we touched on earlier, you do not need a special license to play music at a private party such as a wedding or a birthday. That's not the case for corporate events, but that's beyond the scope of this podcast and we're not going to go into it any further than that. Just know you do not need a special license to play music at a private party. The most obvious license that you will need is a marriage license. Be sure to research the requirements for a marriage license in your city and state. For sake of example, again, where I live, a marriage license needs to be done within 90 days of your wedding date. You cannot get a marriage license six months before your wedding. It will expire. So get the information ahead of time and do not get caught scrambling on trying to get a marriage license in the last week or days before the wedding. That would be exceptionally stressful and it's something that can easily be avoided. So throw marriage license on your list, research it six months out, that's fine, and just get the information and know the exact timing for when you'll need to get that taken care of. Coming up after a quick break, I have your wedding questions and stories to share. There are some really good ones this week, and I'll be back in just a couple minutes. Susan's Travel Services is so excited to partner with you to plan your honeymoon, destination wedding, or maybe even your bachelor or bachelorette party. Susan and her team have been planning dream vacations for 27 years, and they are truly the best in the business for start to finish planning services. Travel and new experiences are incredibly special to me, and Susan and her team have helped me plan some unforgettable vacations, including a bachelorette party in Cabo and a family anniversary celebration in Cancun. They meticulously researched the best all-inclusive options for us based on some very specific priorities and the professional assistance in choosing location, resort, activities, and transportation was absolutely priceless. Susan has been in the travel business for 27 years and she personally travels to her recommended destinations all the time. So she has firsthand on the ground experience with all the amazing resorts, excursions, and services that she recommends. From all-inclusive resorts in Mexico and the Caribbean, overwater bungalows in the Maldives, or that African safari that you've always dreamed of, save yourself hours of research and guesswork and let Susan and her team find you the best options for a -a once-in-a-lifetime vacation. Reach out to Susan and her team today by emailing info at susanstravelservices.com And be sure to let her know that I sent you and get $50 off your final booking or $200 off your destination wedding. Her email one more time is info at susanstravelservices.com. 
Minted Weddings offers you incredible prices on freshly sourced stationary designs from independent artists for everything from your save the date announcements to invitations, matching wedding websites, programs, seating charts, and beyond. Enjoy a complimentary 30-minute stationary design consultation to help you find the perfect style for your unique wedding celebration. You can also try out their free monogram maker, which is so fun and so easy. You simply plug in your first names, your wedding date, and choose from dozens of fun designs and custom colors. I recommend Minted to all of my friends and family because not only are their gorgeous designs incredibly affordable, most importantly, they offer a flawless and luxurious end product. I use Minted every year for our family's holiday cards, and I also love their wide selection of unique stationery and personalized gifts. Wedding Planning Podcast listeners can view current promotions and special offers by visiting weddingplanningpodcast.co slash minted. That website one more time is weddingplanningpodcast.co slash minted. We have a listener who is torn between a sentimental venue versus another want. I'm going to gloss over this note. Uh, There is a church that her grandfather helped build and her dad's side of the family still attends that church. It would mean a lot to everyone on that side of the family for the wedding to be there. But the problem is that there are no venues around the family church where the listener would like to host the reception. The closest venue that she would love is an hour away, but it's kind of inconvenient. Having guests come in and travel an hour is not ideal. What should we do? In a very tiny nutshell, anytime you find yourself torn between what you really, 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 truly want and you have thought it through, you've thought of all the other options, If you really want it and you're torn between inconveniencing your guests, I would always lean towards what you and your partner actually really want versus being concerned about an inconvenience to others. Now, obviously within reason, here you mentioned that the venue you would love to host the reception at is one hour away from that family church. For any guests who are absolutely that repelled and repulsed by driving one hour, they can skip the ceremony and meet you at the reception venue in the worst case scenario. Having an hour between the two places is not ideal, but if you've thought it over and that's truly what you want, I would not call that a deal breaker and I would go ahead with creating a meaningful day for you and your partner and doing what the two of you really want. Okay, our next situation is something that I think a lot of us can relate to, and that is that we all get married at the same time time. It feels like everyone's wedding gets crammed into the same one to two year window and it can get really, really, really stressful and frustrating when you're trying to plan your own wedding and you've got six other weddings to be concerned with that are going on around you. In many cases, you are an actual bridesmaid or groomsman in those other weddings. It's causing you to travel, to spend a ton of money, and it can just get really, really frustrating when you are trying to focus and enjoy your own wedding plans, but you're being torn between a bunch of friends who are also getting married at the same time. If you find yourself in this situation, I'm going to open my arms wide right now and give you a humongous virtual hug. Honestly, you might have to skip something or multiple somethings in the coming years. I can relate to this feeling of kind of helplessness and frustration and trying to be protective of your time, your money, your mental sanity. I suffer from FOMO or fear of missing out on a daily basis. I want to take all the trips. I want to be at all my kids' school events, all the family stuff, all the friends who need me. 
I want to go on cruises with my family and camping trips with my friends. And honestly, in the end, you are the one who ends up suffering because you've spread yourself too thin. I know you want to be there for all your friends' weddings and all of their exotic bachelorette parties and all of their other destination weddings and destination here and bridal shower at the fancy vineyard and then bachelorette party in Vegas and then another bachelorette party in Mexico. It just gets too much. So take a deep breath and try to put things in perspective. Look at a big year at a glance calendar and just be sure to protect yourself and protect your own interests and your own mental sanity while still being compassionate and honest and understanding to your other friends who likely all feel the exact same way that you do. I know this is easier said than done. Trust me, I've been there. I know understand and please feel from me you are not alone and this frustration you are feeling is real you deserve happiness you deserve going to sleep at night knowing that your finances are secure your time is secure you are enjoying your own engagement season so I hope those words are encouraging I hope they're helpful I know it's not a great answer that's really actionable. But I understand and trust me, everyone listening understands as well. We're here with you. Okay, switching gears a little bit. This next one is a DIY do-it-yourself style wedding, lots of heavy lifting at a youth camp, which sounds exceptionally fun. And the listener writes in, there's a lot of logistics and things I have to think about and all the ideas are in my head, but now my head is spinning. Wedding overwhelm strikes again. I was wondering if you could suggest a wedding planning book or worksheets where I can organize everything. I tried looking online for worksheets, but got even more overwhelmed. Thanks so much. All right, so here's the scoop. I don't have an actual planning system or collection of worksheets or binder or all-inclusive wedding guide to recommend. Trust me, (laughs) I've tried to make one. I wish I could make one. And the problem is it's so hard to nail it because every wedding and every event is so very unique and is blessed with all of its own ins and outs and quirks, it would just be impossible to encapsulate every wedding scenario inside one all-inclusive wedding binder of worksheets and guidance. So here's what I do have. I've been sharing my signature wedding planning advice on the podcast for eight years now. And for the first time ever, I've opened up my door to one-on-one wedding strategy calls. Whether you're looking for just one session to get your wedding plan started or a series of ongoing support calls throughout your engagement, I'm here for you. Get the details and book your first call today when you visit wedpodcast.com. Okay, and last question for today. I'm going to summarize this one. We have a very proactive friend who has gotten engaged and her wedding is taking place after yours, but she is gung-ho and just really, really, really making things happen quickly. And she has already asked you to be a bridesmaid for her. However, the problem and the awkward situation is that you do not plan on asking her to be a bridesmaid for you. How do we handle the awkwardness of someone who's asked me to be their bridesmaid, but I don't plan on returning the honor and asking her? Should you reconsider? Should you feel guilty? How to deal with the awkwardness? Okay, first things first, I would take a deep breath. And I would just let this sit for a while. I would not 
be in a rush to have a conversation with your friend about being a bridesmaid or not being a bridesmaid. You mentioned that she is way gung ho and just out there doing all the things right away. It's not your style. You're a little more laid back. Let this sit. You are never obligated to ask anyone to be in your wedding party. That's not the way it works. I know it can be uncomfortable and it can be awkward and it can result in some awkward conversations. That comes up. It's going to come up in wedding planning. It certainly comes up in life in general. And we simply need to handle it with confidence and grace and compassion and very honestly having a conversation. So I mentioned let it sit for a while. Don't rush out there and start frantically trying to over explain yourself. Just let a week pass, let a couple weeks pass, and then explain to her that you are exceptionally honored to be in her bridal party. However, you already have yours all lined up. You're keeping it very small. And sadly, you do not have the space to ask her to be a bridesmaid for you. Awkward? Maybe. But have the conversation, be as straightforward and honest as possible, and then we can be done with it and move on from there. The worst thing you can do in these cases is try to dodge the subject or make up an excuse or make up a reason why. Just be honest. You already have your bridesmaids chosen. You don't have any more space for another one. And you're very honored. If she doesn't want you to be in her party as a result of this, you completely understand And we can move on from there. If we're going to be completely honest, flashback to our question or our conversation about all the friends getting married at the same time, and you have six other friends getting married in the next year or two, and you have to be a bridesmaid in two of those weddings. Being a bridesmaid, being in someone's wedding is a big responsibility. It's a huge commitment. And to be honest, she might be relieved that she's not being asked to be in your wedding. And that's something that she won't have to handle in the next year while she's planning her own wedding. So just a thought, be honest, be careful with others' feelings, be respectful of your own needs and wants. And I hope that you found some nugget of wisdom in our conversation from today. Thank you so, so much for joining me for a full recap of our insurance permits and licensing conversation. Don't forget to visit the blog post for today's show. You can find that at weddingplanningpodcast.co slash wedding dash insurance. I send you my best wishes. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of your wedding plans and for trusting me with your questions and for trusting me to be a part of your engagement. That means the world to me. I will see you again next week. Same time, same place. You know what's the number one biggest regret that newlywed couples share? It's that our wedding came, went, and was over in the blink of an eye. So why not extend the experience out across multiple days and multiple events and make it a wedding weekend? There are just six easy steps to planning a life-changing wedding weekend, and you can access the formula right now when you visit weddingweekend.co. Take advantage of flexible payment options or pay in full and get a complimentary wedding strategy call when you visit weddingweekend.co. I'll see you there.